Back again, people. It's not too many days I put up too many videos, especially two in a row, but I think people need to know this. Okay, this is psychology today. And most of you people who've been around vegans or become ex vegans due to health problems and can't understand why some vegans just won't quit, it's because they have kind of, um, which I consider and some psychologists consider mental illness. Now when you say a vegan's mentally ill, let's let's get down to the brass tax here and we'll we'll discuss that. It's called anthropomorphism. Now that's where a human being projects human characteristics on it. Anything but a human. And in this case it appears that uh, vegans are actually projecting onto the animals we tend to eat. And as you can read this, you know, people could have feelings about a pet rock and they have, uh, uh, well, just an anthropomorphism which someone sees human-like attributes in a non-human is often associated with the bonds between humans and their beloved pets or possessions or the way they interpret animal behavior. People can also anthropomorphize in imagining that unseen beings such as God possess human features. And you can see that they talk about, you know, the presence of human qualities in other entities, which, which is misleading, especially when such qualities are absent. Uh, a cow will sniff you to see if you got any food. Or it might just equally turn around and kick you in the head. It's just uh, uh, consumption or defense. And that's all you're going to get out of a, a, an animal, a domesticated animal, not a pet. And it tells you what are some examples of anthropomorphism. Like a child talking to a dog or a teddy bear and, and expects to be understood. They're anthropomorphizing, imagining that the companion possesses human-like perceptive abilities. I'm just reading what they're telling me. I, most vegans, those diehard vegans, will fall into this. Uh, also, when a pet's owner infers a deliberate human-like motive after the pet does something comforting or frustrating. Okay. What do people most often anthropomorphize? Children do it, as they attribute traits or emotions to their toys. And many people continue and engage in other sorts of anthropomorphic magical thinking when they grow up. <coughs> now, which group thinks that you eat just vegetables? that the world will magically become better. Which group? It's not the omnivores. It, seeing pets and other objects as human-like could help fulfill a social need. That one line right there should tell people a lot when they're dealing with vegans, what they're dealing with. Okay? Can anthropomorphism cause misunderstandings? Yes. Non-human animals share many mental faculties with humans, but the tendency to read animals based on human ways of thinking and behaving could lead people to exaggerate the similarities and misunderstand the, the meaning of animal behavior or even project their own personality char characteristics onto the animal. This is the same thing that when people see a, a, a cloud formation, they see a human face. It doesn't mean that the cloud can talk, communicate, or needs to be protected from the planes flying in the air going through it. Let me 
You understand? I could see talking to you a pet. Look, even I can train my cat. I tell it to sit and he sits down. But I haven't seen anybody been able to do that with a cow or a sheep or a pig. And I keep hearing that these uh, pigs are as smart as a dog or this and that. I'm sorry. That's anthropomorphizing. That's just, just a fact. Now, a lot of these vegans are going to get upset because I just burst the bubble on their magical Bambi is real bubble. And like Joey Carbstrom walking around, come on, cow, you want to give me kisses? The cow isn't there to kiss you, Joey. The cow is either seeing if you have food, and as soon as you knows that you don't have anything food, it couldn't give a shit what you do, Joe. You can go out and jump in front of traffic and get ran over by a car, see if the cow jumps over the fence and calls an ambulance for you. That's Joey Carbstrong. Meanwhile, you can get at least 10 different diseases from a cow if you're not careful. And they're, they're idiots, vegans. And... and and I, I don't think it's, it's safe to even call them idiots. They're mentally unstable, and this is what they suffer from. They have a severe case of anthropomorphism. You look at uh, those annoying vegans, the ones that were hold, holding a chicken like it was a child. There you go, both of them are anthropomorphism. Now you understand, most... Most of the people that are anti-vegan weren't projecting uh, characteristics on animals. They were looking to live a healthier lifestyle. They thought if they ate the vegan meal plan or diet that they would become smarter, faster, perform better than they ever had in their life, look better, be more attractive. That's what they thought. And then when they found out it didn't work, they dropped it. But the die-hard vegans... They haven't grown up yet mentally yet. Okay? It tells you. The magical thinking. Like like Orion from Happy Healthy Vegan. If you stop eating meat, all disease and all the atmosphere, all disease will go away. And there won't be no more climate change. That's anthropomorphic magical thinking. These people are worse than anybody you can imagine. So read this article in... Psychology Today, here it is, I talked to a psychiatrist, why do some of these people, though their health is going down in, on the drain, why do they insist on being vegan? They go, it, it has nothing to do with uh, um, a dietary need, it has to do with the social need, okay? And, and I think the, there's a part, here it is. Seeing pets or other objects as human-like could help fulfill a social need. So when, when these people are doing it, they feel a form of emptiness and projecting uh, a human characteristics on an animal is fulfilling a social need. So there goes the mental illness explained on why vegans are vegan and why anti-vegans who are health-based and when their health started to fail, they got off the vegan diet all the way, right away. In this case, you got these diehard vegans who are projecting onto the animals because they have a social need. They see animals like they're protecting people. It's a mental illness, and it's tr helping them to fulfill a social need, with, with, which, whatever that might be, I don't know, but that's where it's coming from. There's an emotional need. Or a social need. That's why vegans are always not coming to the Christmas parties. They only hang out with other vegans. They're gone, people. They're gone. I suggest to all you vegans out there, go get help before it's too late. Because not only are you affecting your physical health, but your mental health is at stake as well. All right, people, I'm out of here. I'm going. Be well, people.
eat well, think well.